These are the stain colors that we have choices of. Black, natural, and a kind of a pickled white. So the first thing that we want to do is to look at both sides of our wood panel and decide which is going to be the front. You can see that there's some beautiful irregularities, knots, and color differences, and you can decide which side you think is more beautiful. The other thing that you might want to keep in mind is um, if there are open holes, then that might be hard because we're going to be using little nails. And if there's any open holes, then it might be um, that that's exactly where one of our nails wants to go. That might be a little challenging. So um, I like both sides. I think that this is particularly pretty. So I'm going to call this the front. So on the back, you want to write your name. You want to put on gloves and an apron. I'm not wearing an apron because I don't have one at home, but you definitely want to use an apron because stain will stain clothes and you won't be able to get the stain out of clothes. You get to pick one of three colors of stain, whichever you think uh, you want to use. I'm going to be using the natural color um, for the example, and it's going to end up looking like this. We need to start by sanding the tops and the sides just lightly. And I think I'll sand over here so that it doesn't go on the table. You might want to sand into the trash can. You can see that I cut two sides. So those are going to be especially rough. And you might just give them a little extra sanding to smooth them out. I also like to sand the corners just so that they're maybe a tiny bit smoother. Make sure any roughness is smoothed out. And then I'm going to lightly sand the top. Okay. Now there's a little bit of sawdust on top. Make sure that that's brushed off. If you have a clean dry brush, it's a good thing to use. And now the fun part. I'm going to take my stain, dip in my brush. You might have um, a bristle brush or you might have a foam brush. And I'm going to start by sanding, or rather by staining my edges. And to get this last edge, I'm just going to um, put down the corner on my plastic. I'm just trying to be careful to minimize uh, where the stain goes. Really work so that it does not go on the floor because we don't want to have our janitorial staff upset with us. And then I'm going to lay it down 
and now I don't have to move it anymore. Make sure that I'm working on the top side, the side that I didn't put my name on. And you're going to put down a nice layer of stain. Work it all the way to the outside. Be careful not to flick your brush, which can make little um, dots of stain go on either the person's project next to you or on the table or maybe even on the ground. It's okay if there are kind of blobs or streaks at this point. We're just covering the whole board and it's going to stain really quickly so we don't have to worry about letting it sit or anything like that. Just make sure that if there's any like little holes then you can kind of dab a little bit of stain down into the hole. Those irregularities I find really interesting and part of the character and what makes each piece just different from all of the others. Okay, now we can put our brush down and get a cloth and we're going to wipe the stain off. I like to start on the sides. Now this is tricky you have gloves so that you can hold on. Let's see, you just wipe off the extra. Now the more that you press down, the more stain you're going to remove. You don't want it to um, sit up here like this. Stain is different from paint and part of the beauty of this project is that we get to see all of the differences in the wood that were used for this panel. So now I'm just wiping off the stain, folding my little cloth so that I am using the part of the cloth that doesn't have stain on it. And you want to wipe it off in the direction of the wood grain. So that's why I'm going this direction. And that looks pretty great. Okay, so we have our stained wood. We have some uh, different stencils. I made these, so they are not perfect, but they're close enough. I have two sizes of stars. I have a cat head. I have um, a butterfly. And we also have letters, every letter of the alphabet, in case you wanted to do the initials of your name. So the next step in this process is to decide what stencil we're going to use. I could use the big star and I would just have the star or I could do a smaller star and maybe do some writing as well. It's really up to you which you want to do. If I did um, the small star, then maybe I could write something inspirational um, about the cosmos or your dreams or something like that. Um, I might put it here so that my writing could go up there. Or if I'm not going to do any writing, then I could do my big star. Um, either way is perfectly fine. The first thing that we're going to do is to decide if how I like the look of my wood and my star. So do I want the wood to be horizontal or do I want it to be vertical? 
it's really up to you. I don't know, I just turned it and I kind of like the way that it looks, so maybe I'll go with vertical. You line up your stencil, and especially if it has a straight edge, then you wanna make sure that it is evenly spaced from the top down. Make adjustments as you need, and then trace. Once we get all of the um, string and nails in place, then you're not going to see that line. So it's okay if it's kind of dark. The next thing that I wanna do is to map out where I'm going to be putting my nails. So to do that, I'm going to use my ruler and I'm going to make a little tick mark every half inch. So you can see on this ruler, um, zero is here, half an inch, inch, half an inch, inch, half an inch, that's three inches, half an inch, that's four inches. So I want to make sure that wherever I have a corner, if it's an outside corner or an inside corner, that I definitely have um, one of my nails in that spot because corners are really important. So I'm going to go ahead and mark that and mark that. And close is close enough, so when I measure this out, I see that it's a little bit short of four. It doesn't really matter. I'm just going to mark off half inches. And then I'm going to rotate, make sure that I have a nail at all of my inside and outside corners. And then mark every half inch as close as possible. Easy peasy. Now we're going to get into our nails. So these are one inch nails, which means that from the tip to the tip, it's an inch. Now our board is three quarters of an inch. Gosh, this is so hard to see, I don't know. Okay, so our board is three quarters of an inch, and that's just fine. We want to make sure and have our nail seated um, firmly in our wood, but also with lots of room so that we can easily wrap around our string. So the way that we're going to do this and make sure that we don't go through the wood, because we don't want to um, put, put the nails all the way in, um, that won't leave us enough room for our, um, this is actually this direction, but anyway, um, it won't leave us enough room for our string. And of course, it's gonna be a problem if it's poking through the other side. So what we're going to do is make sure that we use our pliers. It's doing double duty. It's going to help protect our thumbs and fingers so that we don't smash them. And all of the pliers are marked. It's a little Sharpie indicating where you're going to put your nail. So you're going to put your nail into your pliers right at the place that it's marked. I hope you can see that. And then you're not going to push it down any further than that and it won't go through the board. So we're going to take our pliers. We're not going to be using our fingers to hold the nail. We're going to use the pliers to hold the nail. And we're going to take that nail. We're going to put it in place on one of our little, little X's. We're going to take our handy dandy little um, hammer. And you just want to make sure that it doesn't go down any further than the pliers will let it. Um, it can even stick up just a tiny bit. And 
and like I said, close is close enough. If it's at a little bit of an angle, it's not a problem. And you're just going to make your way around, taking your pliers, seating your nail, positioning your nail over one of your marks, and doing the same over and over again. So one thing to keep in mind, if some of the nails go in a little bit sideways, it's okay. You can see not all of mine are perfectly straight. So now we're going to pick two colors. I really like the red and the white, and if I had blue, then I think maybe I would do a blue, like a dark blue. Um, as well because uh, with the star it's kind of a patriotic symbol and I'm trying to go with that red white and blue theme white being the background but I didn't like the blue that was my choice so I ended up um, deciding to go with gray and I'm going to do gray on the bottom and then red on the top as my accent so the first thing that I'm going to do is to take the end of my um, this is actually twine so it's not going to be as fluffy as yarn and it's going to work really well for this particular project. I'm just going to pick one of my spots, um, my nails that I'm going to tie uh, a, a knot in my twine. And if you don't know how to tie a knot, let me know. You just crisscross over the twine and then flip it up so that it goes in between and you do that twice leave the tail really pulled tight and then you're just going to take the twine and essentially hook it over every nail now you can be very regimented about this and structured. Maybe you go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and so forth. Um, maybe you're a little bit more chaotic and irregular and you just like pick one of the nails and string it back and forth. I kind of like that. So I'm going to come up here and when I bring my, um, my twine, all the way up across then I'm going to pick my nail and I'm going to circle it around once so just so that you can see that I'm circling it around once and then I'm finding another nail to go to um, so I'm just going to pick one and circle it around pick another one maybe I'll do every other um, every other one pick one circle it around it's kind of looking good every other one and I'm gonna push this down to the bottom and then
Now you can use your pliers, leave some distance because you're going to want to tie a knot in the twine on one of these nail heads. So leave maybe like a hand length of, diff of uh, extra. And then there's a little cutting tool right here. And if you squeeze it, you might have to squeeze it a couple of times, but it'll act as a pair of scissors. And there you go. Now just tie another knot, push all of this twine down next to the board. And then tie a knot around one of your nails. So that your twine doesn't come loose. There you go. Now you can close your pliers and use it to push down all of the twine so that it's nice and close to the board. We're going to be doing another layer of color and this time it's going to be in my accent color. And I wanna make sure that I have plenty of nail space for my second layer of twine. Okay, now I'm going to be using my red twine and I'm going to start the same way. I'm going to take my twine, wrap it around one of my nail heads. Make a double knot. Try to make it really tight so it doesn't come off. And now I can do the same thing. Now I'm going to do one last thing. I'm going to take either my gray or my red and I'm going to make a border. So I think I'll do it with my red. Or maybe I'll do it with my gray. What do I like? Do I like my gray or my red? I think my gray. So, you're going to start the same way. Tie a knot. Double it up. And then and what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap um, each nail just around the outside. So I'm just circling it around the outside of each nail all the way around. You can decide if you want to do this border or not. I feel like it really helps kind of give it a nice clean finished look.
once you make it back to your original nail then you're just going to continue but on the inside push down might take a minute push down all of the outside edges and then just wrap on the inside. And it makes this kind of like chain link type uh, look to it and it just um, keeps all of the twine on the inside from popping off of the nails. When you get to the end, you're going to measure about a hand length. Use your pliers. Cut the twine. And tie your knot. In this case, I'm back around to where I began and I actually already have a little piece of twine. So I can use that to make my double knot. Tie it once, tie it twice. And then I can use scissors or my um, little pliers and cut off the extra. Maybe I'll use scissors for the rest of these. And, or you can just tuck in the tail. That's fine too. See if you can hide it in there. And that's it.